Hello, YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans. This is the 13th Doctor's TARDIS, the latest release from Character Options. Is it a flight control toy or even a spin and fly version? Well, actually, it's neither. I've reviewed a lot of plastic blue boxes over my tenure as a toy reviewer, so let's see what we can find out about this one that's so radically different from the rest. Taking a look at the box, the design is in the new grey and blue B&M set style, a stark contrast to the bright blue and yellow design of official first wave releases in the 13th Doctor line. The box features the stacked logo in the top corner with a diagonal, undetailed image of the place box extending down the front. It is the 13th Doctor's TARDIS with light and sound effects and offers opening doors as well as takeoff and landing lights and sounds. The box is displayed well thanks to this large window which covers the front and one side of the packaging. The back offers us some blur on the TARDIS itself, but it's unchanged from any other TARDIS release, so there's no real point in reading all of it out. In fact, the last paragraph is the only one worth bothering with, and you can pause the video if you want to read any of that. So that's it for the box, let's open it up and take a look-see at the toy itself. So here we have the 13th Doctor's TARDIS. You can instantly tell that this is a much smaller box than previous releases, and more in scale with the classic boxes because that's exactly what it is. Characters seem to have based this toy on their first Doctor TARDIS, but it doesn't look out of place with any of the classic releases. This makes it heavily inaccurate, as it's narrower than the real box, and doesn't feature those indentations running down the sides. Fortunately, they did manage to get the colour right, and the paint apps reflect the worn and weathered look of the box in the show, with bubbling and cracks present across the surfaces. The lantern on the top is a new mould too, and it looks great. The police box signage across the top is not made from moulded plastic, as with prior releases, but instead are merely stickers which have been placed into the middle of the housing. Likewise, the windows are inaccurate as well and feature white frames instead of blue. Fortunately, the pull to open door has the handle on the right way, as well as the black backing with white text, and the handle and lock for the larger doors can be seen beside it, and they feature a high level of detail. The sides of the box all offer more of that worn and peeling paint design, which complements it nicely. However, the back is beleaguered by the usual battery compartment and speed speaker issues. Finally, the underside gives us a few buttons, as well as the usual legal from Dibbled. So overall, it's nice, but another case of character reusing inaccurate parts, instead of creating something truly original. Turning to features, the TARDIS offers lights and sounds, which are activated in the usual way by switching it on and setting it down. As you can hear, the landing sound plays very clearly and loudly, while the blue LED in the lamp continues to flash on and off in its accurate blue. Likewise, the takeoff sound is triggered when the box is lifted from a resting position. You may have already noticed it by this point, but the signage and windows do not light up. It's just the lamp that flashes. This is a real letdown, as I love the versions of the TARDIS with the light effects, as they give it that extra touch of magic when on display. The TARDIS also offers opening doors, which are operated in the same way as others in the range, so let's take a look at the inside of the police box. <laughs> Okay, so, Mr. Manny, yeah. here is uh, Jodie Wickedy Woe's new TARDIS. Yay. All right, now, I want you to open it. Open the doors. What open the doors. What? Not even joking with you. Why? I mean, I, I can't actually believe this. I actually thought this was a mistake when I first opened it. There's no interior card. That's right. This has all the hallmarks of one of characters' classic TARDIS toys with the interior of the box and the battery compartment clearly visible. Character couldn't even print out a picture of the interior and stick it into the box? That's another highlight that made these toys so unique 
stripped away from it. The 10th Doctor and 12th Doctor flight control TARDISes are some of my all-time favourite collectibles, just for offering the lights and interior card, as they do look genuinely stunning when on display. But this feels so cheap and lifeless in contrast. Little thought, care or effort has been put into this, and it's so obvious to see. And doing a quick size comparison, the 13th Doctor TARDIS is much smaller than past modern series police box releases. And, shocker, it's the same size as the classic boxes. The 13th Doctor figure fits inside it, but the scale just looks really, really off. So overall, what do I think of this toy? Well, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. As I mentioned before, I love the 10th and 12th Doctor Tardises. The lights, the features and the detail all combine to create excellent toys that doubled as collectible display pieces. This, however, is not worth its price tag. It's so cheap and lacklustre that it wouldn't look out of place amongst the B&M sets. Heck, they've even redesigned the packaging so it will inevitably fit in with the bargain basement figure releases found in most B&M stores. I could forgive the B&M bargains one, but like... That, that, that is literally what that is. Yeah, they're just... That's a B&M bargains toy. Why they've just put so the... backwards? Why is it when you tell them, put the electronics in it? Yeah, we'll put the electronics in it. You can squish that. I'm just so confused as to how this happened. I remember seeing the prototype images of this toy and following its progress up to its release date, and it looked nothing like this final version. I do hate to say this, but if characters don't have the money to give the fans a decent toy, then they shouldn't have the license. How on earth they still do astounds me. I mean, if you're renting an apartment you can't afford, you don't just give your landlord less money each month. So why should character be treated any differently? Ultimately, this is a total travesty of a toy, and easily the worst in character's revived series TARDIS line. I miss the level of toys character used to produce so much, as in the end, all I see in this is nothing more than wasted potential. Thank you so much for watching this review. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, support us on Patreon, all that good stuff, and we'll see you soon for another review. Until then, take care and farewell.